Hi everybody, welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Today's topic, birds of a feather flock together. What, what does that mean? Uh, why do they do it? When do they do it? Uh, what are the advantages, disadvantages, that kind of thing? That's what we're covering today. It is a commonly seen site, especially now in the fall. One of the inspirations for this program was this site right here. They are driving down the road this time of year. You see the power lines just filled with blackbirds, especially starlings and uh, lingering red winged blackbirds and big fl blackbird flocks that are, for the most part in my area, core flocked by starlings. Uh, and they're they're gathering up. We know now why and when, which is this the fall and early winter, but why? Well, they, we're going to talk about a couple of different reasons. The uh, the main thing is survival. That, that's pretty simple. Uh, it increases their chance of surviving the coming harsh months. The, the, the winter months, falls when we see them gathering, winters when we see the flocks mainly, uh, and uh, it helps them survive. Well, how does it help them survive? Well, if you've got many eyes looking for food, like this flock of Franklin's gulls just swarming. There were 9,000 of them reported at uh, our largest lake here in Kansas City just a couple of days ago. Uh, these guys, when they're, they're migrating and flying together, they're uh, looking for suitable food sources, which can be lakes. It can be farmers disking uh, or plowing a field, and stirring up food. And if one guy finds it, the rest of us are going to find it. So more eyes uh, searching out for food. And you know, they, it, we see it a lot in waterfowl. I mean, like the, the snow geese here are really uh, swarm up at a refuge up here uh, north of us. And in the winter, it tops out at over a million snow geese on the refuge, uh, it, especially in spring migration back north. But in the fall, uh, the numbers are staggering. And these birds are followed by bald eagles because when you have a million birds, uh, even 1% of natural death, provides a lot of food for a bird like a bald eagle and you scoop them up and take advantage of that. And while flocking has its advantages, like more eyes to the sky, uh, and of course, in this case, they'd be searching for bald eagles. And when the bald eagles come soaring over, they can uh, take off the water and in comes another advantage. They can confuse predators by swirling and, and making it hard for a predator to focus in on one bird there. But it also has its disadvantages. Uh, a, a lot of birds swirling around like that, you're going to get in air collisions. There's going to be so many birds that, that hit each other. And then, of course, they're injured, they fall, uh, and then it's harder for them to survive. And they're easy pickings for uh, eagles and foxes and coyotes and things like that. Um, so there's advantages and disadvantages of it, but it must be overall successful or they wouldn't do it. You know, birds do what it, it takes to survive. And uh, this is a, one example of large numbers. Another predator that they have to be on the lookout for, of course, are peregrine falcons, which follow migrating flocks as well. And, you know, peregrines are incredible aerial predators, but they have to zero in on a target. And, and and knock it out, uh, hit it, impact it, and knock it out. Well, if you're you're swirling and you're got and you've got several of you like stacked in in a line, that makes it harder for that peregrine to to focus in on that one target. So uh, they, they they that's the eyes on the sky, eyes on the ground for food. Very very good advantage. And then of course we have migrating flocks. We they, and and. Why is lots of birds migrate together, but waterfowl and, and heavier birds in ten, it, it overall tend to uh, fly in formations. And we know aerodynamically, like these Canada goose, we often see, but this is a better example here with these uh, double crested cormorants flying in the famous V formation. And we know that. For aer aerodynamically, the wind, the, the birds at the front of the line are taking the brunt of the air force. And so they're they're getting tired easily more than the rest of them because the wind swirl, they, they up uplift from the wind, from the wind wing beaks of the birds in front of them, make it easier for the ones down the line to fly. So if you watch them, they're constantly switching out. The lead bird will go back in the line, and a new bird will take over in front, and that uh, helps that the whole flock when they do that. And they, you know, they, one bird doesn't fly till he's exhausted and dies. It, it, they they switch out and share the the duty there. 
And then we have famous uh, massive flocks like these murmurations they're called of starlings. And this is much more of a hive mind type of uh, You see these uh, incredible videos of them swirling around and and uh, then they and they'll settle in. And a lot of these uh, lead, especially like this picture at, at dusk, uh, these lead to roosting uh, flocks. And there's uh, advantages and, and uh, disadvantages of roosting flocks. You have a huge concentration of birds that roost in one site, a, a patch of trees or um, they there's, they can root like chimney swifts and chimneys and there but they'll settle in on a patch of vegetation and there's it's an incredible show to watch where they stage in the air above the roosting site and they go to settle in well the dominant birds the by far the most advanta advantageous place to be in a roosting flock is toward the middle and the little uh, up uh, the up is so you don't get pooped on at night but they uh they the safer you in the middle of the flock because if predators were come along like a, a fox or a raccoon or whatever can get to that uh, the, the outer edges of that roosting flock, then the outside birds are more easily picked off and, and, and controlled and taken. So the, the ones in the middle of the, are the safest and, the, and usually the older, more dominant birds that claim those. And they've been, they, they settle in eventually and then they're, they're there for the night. Other types of birds that, that flock together, these, these are Wilson's snipe. That, and again, these guys are, are depending on mud and worms that are in, this, in the mud. And so they're constantly in search for suitable feeding areas. Uh, cedar wax wings, very famous for their uh, flocks, the feeding flocks. When they, and of course, they're looking for berry crops. And so they got more eyes to the forest and, they, and, and, and the forest edges and the tops of the trees. And they settle in on food sources and one finds and then they, and then the others find food. So they move along, move around that way and settle back in. So they, it really is a, a, a fascinating topic. Survival is the key. More eyes to the sky for predators, more eyes to the ground for food. If one person, one bird finds food, the others are more likely to. If one sees a predator and it can initiate an, an invasive mover, then it, you, your flock is likely to survive it better. So uh, not all, all, all birds do it, but those that do, uh, it is fascinating to watch. So it's a great idea for a program. Bird biology is always a subject. So send in ideas for future programs, if you will. Give us a like, give us a share. And if you're on YouTube and you haven't subscribed yet, Hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell so you know when I'm on next. Until next time, let's talk birds.